On this episode of IT Unplugged, we talk about AI and how you can use it to effectively fight cyber criminals. At M2 Technology, we're on a mission to make IT accessible to everyone. Join us on our journey to demystify the ever-evolving world of business technology. Are you ready to get unplugged? Welcome back to IT Unplugged. I'm Brandon. And I'm Mike. And today we are talking about AI and how it is impacting cybersecurity. So Mike, you know, what is AI uh, really doing in the cybersecurity space? And do you have any real world examples of products or services that are using AI? Absolutely. So just a second, just in case somebody's not aware of AI, right? We, we like to break it down sometimes. Mm-hmm. Artificial intelligence. Yeah. Real simple. Um, it, Real simple. Like anybody can do it. Yep. Artificial intelligence. Done deal. Total yeah. wrap. Yep. Uh, artificial intelligence in an example of, of, again, we're relating things back to security, but an example of how it's used in security is um, your endpoint protection or the endpoint protection that you would use as part of our Guardian package is Sentinel-1. Um, Sentinel One has different plugins and uh, tools that they use to help maintain uh, visibility of current threats, mm-hmm. one of which being AI based. So, in an ever changing sphere of, of threats coming from all angles, uh, they can help identify the threat in real time better with AI than just based off of maybe like a library of prior yeah. threats. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, I mean, uh, just trying to think of what that might look like, you know, 15 years ago or something, you have a threat, you make a log of it, uh, like an individual, uh, and you know, then at the end of the day, they put it all together and like, oh, here's all the threats that were, we'll right. build out some stuff it's, for it. It's in a library, if yeah. you will, right? And you know, you know, you know, X Y Z is a threat, and then next month, you know, X Y Z one is also a threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but maybe in that time period. Of, of when something gets updated, there's six more threats and you know, you're not keeping up with that or an sure. individual or a team is not keeping up with that. When then in real time, um, this solution from Sentinel One, uh, much like others can uh, adapt to that yeah. and then push out updates it, yeah. it, as they come. I could see how that'd be a lot more efficient. Um, and you know, a recent Deloitte study said 70% of CEOs were looking to leverage AI uh, when it came to their business, uh, essentially like for efficiency. Hmm. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, Mike, do you use AI in any of your, you know, Sentinel One might do that, but do you ever use AI to be more efficient? I, I don't have any wild examples, especially like awesome examples, just because so much of what I do is, is face-to-face with somebody that it, I, I can't deploy it in a standard workflow, mm-hmm. or at least I'm not familiar with deployment of it in my normal workflow. Um, I know that you do, and I assume that you can speak uh, of that. Yeah, well, I mean, if if I do it, it's like more so from a creative process or, yeah. um, you know, like getting ideas and different things like that. I know, like, um, in the past, I've definitely been like, be a social media creator and create these posts. Uh, and I can I can use it a lot for those things. It's never really something super technical though. Like I have a little sure. bit of trouble, and I think this is the interesting thing with AI, is like I have a little bit of trouble of trusting it fully with something that's very, very uh, technical in nature that I would have to give like full trust to, which is odd because that's the thing like i'm using ai for creative reasons yeah. instead of the technical which is like kind of backwards but the trust for me just isn't there to like fully let it do its own thing well i mean Ed, even if it's an incorrect answer it will very very accurately and happily give you an incorrect answer <laughs> yes right yes. so it, a little a little bit of uncharted waters for, yeah in, in some cases that's not to say that you know, how it's being used for Sentinel One, like our first example, sure. is just complete uh, loose cannon. You yeah, know, it's just yeah. set to run loose and uh, you shouldn't trust it. That's not the case. When it's something like that, it's, it's, although it's benefiting from features of AI, it's building or adding to an existing you know, user created yep. database or, yeah. you know, in their case they have, correct, there's AI that's, that's doing that, but it's aiding a, an existing team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> like, that's a big thing, right? Uh, I don't know if everybody truly understands how much work it takes to, um, leverage AI effectively. Like mm-hmm. you need a team of data engineers, uh, that are actually like going ahead and, 
shaping the tool to work effectively. And there's a lot of training in place that happens. So um, with that being said, I think there's some red flags on like AI is kind of like a, a, a little, it's like the new gold rush essentially, right? So sure. everybody's run into it and like, where can I make my money? And some of these places are just kind of uh, using a plugin for chat GPT and they create some fancy products and say, this AI can do all this stuff. Presumably fancy product. Yeah, yeah, presumably yeah. fancy product uh, and pay us this much a month and like these crazy promises, but not fully delivering. So it's one of those yeah. things that, um, like leveraging a partner that knows how to use AI uh, would be beneficial, or at least taking your time. And right. Like in our case, yeah. you know, we've 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 properly vetted something. We've we've investigated. We figured out. You know, hey, this is this. Okay, this works. Yep. Like step one, but it works with our current workflow that we have, yeah. or it works with the customer set that we have. Um, you know, they have different aspects of their their product that you can build upon. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe. Maybe there's level one, if you will, right? And then level two, and then they also have a 24 seven live man sock service, right? Yeah. And that's something totally, totally different, but there's different aspects of it. It's not just, you know, AI company X that says, hey, this is the best new AI antivirus. Yep. Yeah. Not so much, you know, yeah. it's an established product. Yeah, and even, um even in Sentinel-1's antivirus, right? Like you can essentially start it off like not leveraging all the AI capabilities. Um, right. And then you can kind of ramp that up. And I almost think it's like recommended. You don't want to turn on every capability right away because there needs to be a period of learning and there needs to be data that's digested in order to uh, make it work efficiently. And we, as, as you know, who's deploying it and who's yep. maintaining it, we can change that on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. But also Sentinel-1, uh, they can also change it on, you know, case-by-case -case basis. Yep. So, you know, maybe they push out a change and hey, you know, this could be better. They make a little fine fine tune, right? Uh, and over the year update and everything is happy again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a ton of different ways to use it. I guess I'm kind of curious, let's, let's get away from the technical aspect. Uh, Mike, this is the answer, or this is the question I want answered. Uh, is AI gonna take your job? No. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> on to the next. No, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, I'm going like opposite Terminator there. I'm yeah. coming after them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are going to destroy the AI. Uh, no, like, do you uh, see, like, what do you think are the main things that you do? The blanket statement of no is strictly just because yeah. from a consulting standpoint, uh, we're most often in addition to um uh, an existing IT staff or an additional technical staff or an mm -hmm. additional, um, you know, C-suite staff or something, right? So we're providing uh, human insight sure. and a face-to-face -face interaction that you, at least as of this point, you know, maybe there's there's some awesome robot down the line that's doing something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, at least as of now, I mean, no, you're getting this face-to-face -face and that's what, that's what uh, people work with us yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. I guess you get those repeatable things that can be automated or, you know, AI sure. machine learning, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm sure eventually maybe some of those mundane tasks could be taken away. I mean, you can already write a script. That's not essentially yeah, AI, yeah. but yeah, you're, you're running an onboarding and it's the same repeatable process over and over. Like, yeah, you bet that we have tools to automate that. Yeah. Uh, the entire process from start to finish, not so much. That's yep. that's not the case, especially if there's like a wild card, right? Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong. Um, but we have we have things to make that smoother for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a really interesting space right now. And then to see where that efficiency is going to go. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like what else is it's it going to be? Completely unknown. Yeah. Is right? it, I mean, will it be a price reduction for like companies because we're doing things more efficiently? Is it going to be more profit for the businesses that figure it out? Uh, like what does that kind of look like? I mean, I guess. It, you mentioned chat GPT, uh, you, well, a couple of times, right? And that's that's like, you know, kind of a bigger name, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it, I would I would like to say it's a household name. You know, yep. people understand that that's a thing that exists uh, that wasn't that way, you know, mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah. maybe 2021 right so if that's how far we've came if you will right that's if we've, that's the come up in in three years uh what does that look like in in one more year in three years in five yeah. years right and who knows it's crazy and just the more data that's being fed to it i mean the large language models yeah. aren't always the same and in, in everything right but like uh i asked it to to run 
like schema backend HTML for um, for a website, and I'm like, I don't even know if this is right. I don't know what it means. And uh, <laughs> so yeah. you just hit publish, and we're uh, good to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that web page will be fine. Yeah, uh, but but it no, it, like it, pushed it out, and it was yeah. correct. Uh, and it like brought me back to uh, I used to teach coding. God help those kids uh, back in the day. Uh, in and. Uh, it was like a Google script, some kind of HTML code and some Google thing. And uh, we would sit there and they go, Mr. Roberts, what's wrong with this code? And it was like 25 lines of code. Yeah. And of course, it's like one semicolon in there. Like, control That's, C, control yeah. P, chat GPT, spit yeah. it. You're like, oh, this line right here. Now it does that. You're like, <laughs> yeah. what is broken in this code? And it's like, control C, yeah, exactly like yeah. you said. And it's just there. And you're like, oh, that's uh, that's a game changer, though. It really is. And it, it was so funny because people are like, oh, well, kids are going to take advantage of it. It's like, yes, they yeah, well, they should. They should learning learn. Now. It's yeah. a tool that's available to them. Yeah. And that's yeah. going to, that's a new role that's already out there, like head of uh, some artificial intelligence at these big companies because whatever, if you can use it more efficiently than the person next to you, well, now you've brought a, a level of value um, that somebody else can't. And that is important. If the good guys are using it, in our case, you yeah, know, uh, yeah. antivirus and, and, you know, maybe you're using it to assist with coding or finding errors in coding. If, if you're still, you know, you're manually doing the process, but just as a second set of eyes, then definitely the bad guys are using it. Yes. Yes. That's a really good point is, um, and I think that's some of that hesitancy too. like, ah, I don't know if I want to use it. Well, bad actors are using AI. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 100% to try to get at your data. Um, and you might think, but like why AI wouldn't do something bad though. Right, Mike? Like you, you can't get AI to do something, hmm. um, that will harm somebody else. Can you? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, fun, the, this is the transition is, um, we actually have a new intern at, uh, M2 technology and uh, his name's Alexander, and the, the assignment that we had for this episode of the podcast was to uh, use ChatGPT and uh, other large language models to um, create some uh, phishing emails that, oh we're gonna, that we're gonna test you with. Now, the funny thing is, uh, what do you think ChatGPT said when we uh, typed in, uh, you know, uh, hey, I, help me create a phishing email? I think that depending on the spelling of phishing, it <laughs> is giving some uh, very uh, bassy results. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> that was good. Uh, do, do we, can we get a drum uh, effect? Did it, did it just work? I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good thought. Uh, no, we did, we did not get any phishing emails like that. We spelt it right. Uh, but it did say... Shoot. Uh, you can't, you can't do that. That's what it said. It's like, nope. Oh, I am ethically, oh. uh, I'm ethically, um, not like, I can't do this. I can't trick people. And then, um, after like a couple more prompts, it was like, we're using it for a training. Um, and then we're doing the like, and we're also going to help people with it. And it was like, oh, okay. And it was able to be tricked in like There's definitely ways around. <laughs> yeah. 100%. So, uh, I'm going to pull up. Uh, a couple emails here, and your job, Mike, is going to be to determine if this is written by a human or if this is written by AI. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. If you're there. listening, this probably won't make a whole lot of sense to you. What do you mean? Um, I, I'll, I'll do my best to explain what we're looking at here. Oh, you're not going to look at it. You don't get to see it. Oh, you're just I'm reading. Gonna, I'm just going to read it to you. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so those listeners at home will be able to see it. So, if I can just find it here, I had it up. This is the magic of doing things live here, right? We can cut this. Don't worry about it. Hey, Quinn, can you cut this? <laughs> Sorry, I probably just made that more difficult. Okay. Here we go, Mike. We got the emails up and ready to go. Okay. What I need from you is to tell me if this was written by a human mm -hmm. or AI. Sure. Okay. I can do that. The first email... Subject, urgent, security breach detected, immediate action required. Dear Mike, we regret to inform you that our security systems have detected suspicious activity on your account. Our monitoring software indicates potential unauthorized access attempts from multiple locations. To safeguard your account and prevent any further compromise, we urgently require you to complete an account verification process. Please click on the link below to proceed. 
Wow. So it's safe. Don't worry. Um, oh, so then you clicked the link now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, I mean, you should have, but yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Upon accessing the verification page, you will be prompted to provide additional security information, including your username, password, and one-time verification code that will be sent to your registered email address. Please be advised that failure to complete the verification process within the next 12 hours will result in the automatic suspension of your account to prevent any potential data breaches. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and appreciate your cooperation in ensuring the security of our systems. Hmm. Best regards, Alexander. AI or human? Well, from not being able to see anything and just based off of how you're reading it um, and you're saying that it's an okay link to have clicked on, which I presume oh, did I, click on. I, it, it's not okay. None of these are going to be okay links. So, Well, well then, it's, then, it's, uh, then it's bad. Yeah, it's, they're all bad. But did AI well, write it or did, did a human write it? That's uh, the question. I'm just going to say AI. Okay. AI did write yeah. that one. Okay. All right, all right. Um, what are some of the red flags that, that you heard in that phishing email? Like some of the things um, as you're going through. Let's make it a learning moment. So, Well, it doesn't ex explicitly reference, you know, hey, your SharePoint. Mm -hmm. your, not that that's presumably safe, but if it's just your account, you know, you're, you're having an issue with your work account, mm -hmm. right? Um, okay, well, if, if you're the alerting system for my work account... Yeah. What is it? My work account for my domain account? Is yeah. it, you know, my computer okay. login? Is it, is it 365? Is it an email? So the generalness of it yep. kind of thing. Okay. I got you. Very general. Yeah. All right. Let's do another one here. Um, subject, urgent invoice payment reminder. Dear Mike, I hope this email finds you well. Attaches oh. <laughs> classic sales. <Yeah. laughs> Attaches the invoice for the recent services rendered by M2 technology. We kindly remind you to review the invoice and process the payment at your earliest convenience. Please find the attached invoice document for your reference. If you have any link, if you have any questions or concerns regarding the invoice, feel free to contact our billing department for assistance. Thank you for your prompt attention to this matter. Best regards, Alexander. So I'm going to, I'm going to say human, but real or sorry, human, but fake, because that sounds suspiciously word for word, like our QuickBooks end of month invoicing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, which is, which is real, yep. you know, but also it's a pre-generated statement that we yeah. have. Yeah. That was AI actually. So interesting. But I can't see it. I'm oh, just I'm going, sorry, Mike. That's <sighs> okay. Uh, maybe next time. No. <laughs> All right. I'm compromised. Yeah. <laughs> and we're breached. All right. Uh, let's do one more here. Uh, subject, lost dog. Dear Mike. Junk. <laughs> oh, that is, we just lost half the audience there. <laughs> like, nobody's empathetic to people that don't like dogs. Come on. What no, happened? I like dogs. No, no, no. <laughs> you just said junk. It was it's, lost that's, dog. That's, that's such a, that's such a common, that's such a common, uh, like, email phishing technique. Oh, okay, okay. It, like, okay. especially, like, a medical or uh, facility like a, ho a large hospital sure. or something all the time it's like lost dog in parking lot or, oh, okay. or you know like like cat scene in parking lot or something like that does really, anybody really common. yeah i wonder what the stats are for dogs versus cats you know what i mean if like people are like oh, i'm thinking i that, gotta find the dog i'm thinking dogs are open uh open to more <laughs> frequently um i know someone personally that sees those emails has told me about seeing the emails and i believe that she has opened the emails uh, um you know who you are yeah <laughs> all right so uh subject lost doc okay mm -hmm. dear mike i hope this email finds you well again uh i had just arrived home from work when i noticed my back door was open and my dog not in the house Oof. i have posted wanted papers across the neighborhood and wanted to extend the search for my dog further with this email my dog is not very independent and i worry for his safety my dog is hard to describe, but I have a photo. <laughs> Insert. <laughs> I understand that this may seem out of the ordinary, and would I would appreciate your consideration to help locate my dog for my family and I. Best regards, mm. Alexander. Wow. Um, Alexander's having a rough day. <laughs> yeah, he's <it's laughs> got all these emails going on right now. <laughs> um, uh, human or AI. AI? That was human. That was Alexander. Um, and it was his real dog, and. Uh, it's lost and you didn't click on it so well too uh, bad yeah we're gonna end this on a real downer no uh with that being said <laughs> <laughs> with that being said like uh phishing emails though are getting better and better like with oh, yeah. with ai it just so much easier dispelling mistakes whatever it is 
uh, you can tell AI sound natural, and then you just sound natural versus someone with you know bad English from somewhere overseas, and none of the grammar makes yeah. sense, right? Uh, even voice now, uh, voice is a huge thing where you can mimic your voice, so a, a voicemail or something like that, obviously. Um, there's yeah. a lot of different ways out there. So um, We have seen a recent example of exactly that. Yeah. You created it. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, there's lots of different things uh, out there. So uh, when it comes to AI, it's really exciting with what's on the forefront. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, uh, the right people are leveraging AI. It's just important to have trusted individuals in your circle that are going to pick the right tools because bad actors are using it too. So it's essentially a race to see who can be more effective uh, when it comes to yeah. utilizing that AI. So uh, if you have questions about AI or staying protected, reach out to M2 Technology. We are here to help. Uh, follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, like this podcast. Give it a five-star review. If you didn't like the podcast, send an email to Mike uh, and do not rate it, please. Uh, and that's it for IT Unplugged. Hope you have a great day.